What is going on, guys? Joey Frenzo here with Flex Training Systems. If I sound quiet on this one, I'm going to throw my microphone out, outside or something. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about what everybody wants to talk about. We're going to be talking about training. We're going to be talking about RPE. We're going to be talking about RIR, which I hate saying it. I just cringe. I just cringe when I say it because it's like overthinking, overthinking, overthinking. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I wanted to touch on this topic because I saw a post online lately. I don't want to get too much into who posted it or whatnot because they're, they're not here, so they can't really speak for themselves. Uh, and I don't want to really speak for anyone, but I thought, hey, you know what? This might be a good topic to talk about. Um, you know, and, you know, a lot of you guys know that I use RPE when I prescribe my training. I have seen uh, mildly overwhelming success doing it that way. So I have no plans to change. Um, the post was talking about RPE not equaling RIR. And I thought, um, you know, I'll just give like my side of it. I'm, I don't even want to really spark a discussion, uh, with anyone because I've already thought about this like through and through. Um, and I, I see where the people are coming from and why, um, you know, they might, they might agree, but, you know, the way that I use it and one thing that we need to kind of understand about training is like at the end of the day, we're just trying to communicate, you know, well, I'm just trying to communicate what I want from my people. And if I freaking speak my own language when I do that, you know what I mean? If I, if, if the word training means something different, like for me that it does for other people, you know, then, then, but I'm able to get results with it. I don't think anybody has a, you know. Nobody can really say anything, you know, about that, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, what the fuck am I talking about? RPE versus RIR. In my, the, okay, so RPE is not, it, it's a very old um, expression, but I believe it was Mike to share many moons ago, like years ago, before IG, before all this stuff started, said, you know, like, for us powerlifters, we can use RPE as a way of kind of rating how difficult something is. Um, and he came up with uh, a scale for it. He came up with a percentage chart uh, that it's like, you know, you can you can kind of personalize it. You know, um, I never really was able to utilize anything like that. I just felt like it got really confusing whenever I tried to equate RPEs and percentages. Um I think the percentages can kind of help give you like a general ballpark, but it becomes kind of useless over time. At least the way that I, at least the way that I teach it, um, RPE, you know, basically essentially is, it goes from like one to 10. What's relevant is really five through 10, you know, four, three, you never, you're probably never going to see that down on a paper. Um, but essentially it is a way of kind of gauging it the way that I've, used it in the way that, you know, I believe Mike intended to use it was, uh, there I go dropping names, trying to speak for people, <laughs> people when I said I wouldn't do that. Um, you know, RPE, we just use it to kind of judge, you know, reps in the tank. Um, RIR is just like a more literal version of that. Some people use velocity trackers and like other means to kind of determine their RPE, kind of think of it as like determining difficulty, which essentially they both are. Um, but some might argue that, you know, you can hit an RPE, you can hit an RPE eight. This is like the main, you know, kind of rebuttal that I've heard is like, let's say you hit an RPE eight or like an RPE nine single, but you couldn't really do one more rep. Then it's like, okay, you know, I wouldn't, if you, if you hit a single at RPE eight and you couldn't do two more reps, then I wouldn't call that an RPE eight. And I like to use decimals to kind of get my point across when it comes to rating something like that. So let's say you could have definitely done one more and then it gets kind of sketchy whether or not you could have done two more. You could just put down like RPE, like 1.2, 1. 1. you know, 1.4, something like that to kind of say, Hey, I could have done one. And then like the next one, I probably wouldn't have got it, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then, and then I just keep it simple. You know, if you guys know me, I try to try, try to keep things as simple as possible. I don't want my people thinking about kind of like obscure, you know, arbitrary things. Um, you, you know, RPE doesn't need to be perfect to be effective. And I think that's absolutely key. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you should, but it is a way to kind of aim for something in your training, right? It's a way to stay objective. It's a way to kind of be aware of what you're doing. And it's a way to kind of adjust on the fly, you know, 
based on like if you get three sets of five at RPE eight or RPE seven, whatever, you should have you know two to three reps in the tank. If you if you don't, then you know you need to go up or down according depending on whatever is being asked of you on your following sets. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can teach it, and there's a lot there's like so many so many different ways that you can like kind of bend the rules a little bit to get better results out of people. I mean, I guess that's kind of like what I, I like to do. Um, you know, I give people like, I'll give people ranges. You know, like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. Your body, if you're doing three sets of five with 75% or you're doing three sets of five with RPE 7, RPE 8, you know, the body doesn't know the difference. I would argue that, you know, the... Who the heck is on my phone? But yeah, guys, the body isn't going to know the difference between... Whether you're doing, you know, I mean, you're going to feel, let's say you're doing, you know, the example that I gave you with RPE on a day where you, where you don't really feel good, you know, and you come in, uh, you know, and you're hitting that three by five at an eight, you know, you'll probably, you're going to be able to get through it. If, if you stick to the RPE, if you stick to what you have for the day, um, you should be okay. Whereas if you're doing something with percentage, let's say that, you know, three by, uh, three by five at 80% or something like that and you have like a lot of outside stresses coming on, going on, you're going to be beat to shit. You're not going to be able to, you know, you're going to force yourself to hit those sets and you're just going to keep degrading, you know, set after set after set after set. And, uh, you know, like it's, it's just, you know, there's a lot of different arguments for or against RPE. I have found the benefits of being like overwhelmingly positive if, if you teach it a certain way. And I think that's, a major thing here is, you know, I think I've found a way to make it work really well for people, um, which is why I'm able to, you know, do the things that I've done. I feel like very confident in my results, right? You guys see it. I show you guys all the time. I do all the coaches corners, all that stuff. Um, so I don't have any plans to do anything differently. And I've always been very critical of the way that I teach RPE and the information that I try to give to my people. Um, and, you know, I try to look for little flaws. Okay, like, what if I run into this problem? Or what if what if this happens? And, da, da, da. you know, what if I give somebody a set of 10? And, like, you know, their heart explodes. And they can't, you know, uh, like, bar speed-wise, they could do tons of tons of reps more. But their heart is, like, dying out at around, you know, rep 9, rep 10, something like that. You know, what do I, what do, I do from there? Um, you know, those are the types of things that I think make a huge difference. I think... You know, my coaching is a very, like, it's a, it's a very, like, uh, we interact often. We interact frequently and I'm able to monitor these things so that, you know, they don't kind of get out of hand. Um, part of the reasons why I don't sell like programs is because, uh, like I don't sell like just set, I don't sell just like a, Hey guys, here's a fucking 10 week program or something because without the coaching, like, I want to say like fucking 60% of people are going to be just lost, right? They're having no idea what they're doing. They're going to get beat up. They're going to have a bad experience and it's just not going to, it's not going to be good for them. Um, I wouldn't feel right if I was like, Hey, give me your money, take this thing and whatever happens happens. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I gotta, there's gotta be coaching with it. In my opinion, if you're going to do RPE, you need the coaching, like absolutely have to have the coaching. There has to be a greater understanding of what exactly you're looking for and going through multiple preps and going through the ups and downs of training and dealing with all kinds of life stress. You're going to reach a level of just like interpretation of like your, of the reality of training that is just going to give you, it's going to yield so much better results than, you know, than what like certain people just want, like, they just want a paper that tells them exactly what to lift and their brain is off and it just gives them these results. But I feel that if you don't have that adaptive mindset, if you don't have that kind of uh, adaptive infrastructure and, and just knowledge to, to make things work for you, sometimes, you know, call audibles and whatnot. We're essentially calling audibles with RPE after, after every set. You know, you're always, you know, adjusting the weights that are on the bar. If you don't know how to do that and you're just trying to like go buy, you know, reps in the tank, um, I mean, you need to go buy reps in the tank. That's the way that I, that's the way that I do it. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it. I don't want this thing to be super complicated. I don't want people thinking about this. If you're not with me and you're thinking about RPE and you don't know like what I'm talking about, 
you can equate the two and you're going to get pretty damn far and you're like, you'll be fine. You're, you're essentially going to be fine. Uh, if you just look at RPE as how many reps do you have in the tank, you don't want to overthink it. You don't want to kill yourself. Uh, you know, just trying to be like, well, I could have, you know, it was RPA, but I don't think I could have done two more. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's all about interpretation. It's all about what we, what do we, you know, what are we trying to get out of what we have down on paper? Um, I'm just looking through my notes really quickly here. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I mean, like I said, uh, just really quickly going over, there could be different definitions for different people. So it's very, you have to be very specific when you talk about context and like, you know, anytime you mention, mention it, or if you want to preach something about RPE, if you don't kind of lay it out, how, how you're speaking about it, then pe some people might get confused. Hell, RPE for like runners is way different than what, than how it is for, for powerlifting. Um, you know, they use it more so like, like hard, easy uh, really hard, medium, something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a lot different than the way we use it. Um, I think the way we use it was just kind of adapted for, for the purposes of powerlifting. Closing notes here, guys, teaching is key. Um, that's it. You got to have the teaching with it. Otherwise it's just going to be really confusing and people are going to get lost. But yeah, if you guys didn't have any questions, um, I'll try to get to them below. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, let me get a hashtag knowledge. Hashtag knowledge in the comments down below. I hope the audio is not bad here. I'm at, I'm at uh, my new room and I'm using like a different computer and everything's like different. So, I hope, you know, I'll probably sound different. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, thank you so much for making it this far. What else? Uh, shit, what do I got going on? Oh, yeah. So... Um, uh, power thing aside, those of you that made it this far was good. How you guys doing? Uh, I, I'm a gamer. You guys know I'm a gamer. Uh, I started a gaming Instagram a little while ago and I put it, I'm going to put it down below. If you guys are interested in something like that, I want to start doing, um, squads like Fortnite squads, or, I mean, I guess I could do apex, but we can, I can only get two people in if I do that. And I just want to, it's just a way for me to communicate with you guys and, and, uh, just kind of hang out with people that have supported me. Um, so I think it'd be really interesting if I just like make a post one day, yo, let me get the first three people in here and you know, we'll, we'll meet each other and we'll play some games and we'll just have a good time. Uh, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to do that while I'm still moving. I'm almost done. Uh, we have Nats coming up. Things are going to be super busy, but definitely after nationals, I'm trying to chill out, play some games, uh, you know, get to know you guys a little bit better. Um, and, and and I may even stream it. So, yeah, guys. Uh, all that stuff's down below. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.